This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Research Talks here. This will be the last Research Talks of 2022. It's Friday. It's Christmas Eve Eve. So hello, Alan. How are you doing on Christmas Eve Eve? Hello, Mark, uh, and a very happy Christmas Eve Eve for you too. Uh, I must apologise in advance uh, if I sound a bit husky. I've got a bit of laryngitis and I'm hoping it's going to go before Christmas Day. Although I'm sure my family would say, actually, it's quite nice for you to shut up for one time. So there we go. <laughs> Well, me too. I probably sound very deep and dulcet as well because I have uh, something developing. So that's that's nicely timed, isn't it, as well, to do a, to a podcast it? recording. We're both very unwell. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, so this time, or roughly this time last year, we did we did this podcast where we don't talk about companies as such. We, we usually do on the research talks. We uh, sort of listed a few companies that um well based on our picks from previous years and we evaluated them and also picks for uh, 2023 so let me take you through some of the i'll just remind you of some of the picks that we picked from last year so we'll start with mine i picked cgnr so that's conroy gold uh panther mm-hmm. metals altona rare earth sabian technology and cavango resources and i think some of them were i, I know i had conroy gold the previous year as well because uh, I was pretty convinced that they were going to actually get something significant done this year because uh, they had the JV signed. But lo and behold, uh, they seem to have gone very quiet. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Um, but my list of uh, companies there would not have been a very good investment because they're, they, they're all down um, mm. and all down fairly significantly on the year. Uh, so, yeah, don't, don't take my picks. You, Alan, you had Power Metal Resources. TM1, uh, Bidstack, Cadence, and uh, I think Coincilium uh, as well. And you did much better than me. I think three out of yours. Uh, so power power has pretty much been range bound, hasn't it, for the whole year? I mean, it's not yes, really. It has, it's yeah. been moved yeah. between sort of one, yeah. one point two, one point seven. So I mean, that's here, neither here nor there. But TM1, uh, that, that 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 had a nice spike uh, pretty soon after that we did the podcast actually in early Jan, and the same with Bidstack. Mm-hmm. I think uh, moved quite nicely as well. And Cadence, and they've all come back since then, but um, they were good picks because in the short term, they, you'd have made some money on them. So the points this year go, go to you, Alan. So, uh, so well done oh, thank on, the, you very much. On, on your picks. There. <laughs> Maybe you'll pick the same ones again now that they are dirt cheap again. I, I don't know. But uh, the year's been, um, yeah, a little different, hasn't it? It's certainly not been the 2020, 2021 sort of year, COVID times, has it? It's def- definitely cooled off this year there's a lot of uh there's less chat i see on on, on yeah. you know the social media that kind of thing i think a lot of heat is is has come out and probably will still continue to come out as well of the market with what's going on with the fed and mm. interest rate rises of course the crypto house of cards is perhaps starting to uh to come down so it's certainly been a year um of uh of maybe reality checks and i think uh it might go on for a little bit longer my, my... It's been remarkable, really, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, when we recorded last year, we had no inkling that uh, that uh, Putin was going to invade the, of course the, not. the Ukraine. Yeah. So, so, of course, that that immediately became a huge factor in, in, in the macro picture. And we had absolutely no concept that at the end of the year, we'd be looking at inflation rates in double figures, um, which would have seemed astonishing had we had we considered that a year ago. But uh, it just goes to show how world events can impact so dramatically on markets, portfolios, outlooks, um, and so on. Of course, we've had high inflation. We've had the continuing lockdown in China, which has impacted on China's growth, um, and so many so many other factors that that I think have uh, weighed on stocks across the board, not just uh, sector specific stocks, but they weighed on the market as a whole. Um, and of course, this is this is part of the challenge of investing. You've got to try and look at how um, how it's going to be impacted going forward, and maybe uh, look towards defensive stocks to maybe uh, hedge against um, such events happening in future. But of course, uh, you know we live in a constantly evolving world, so 
one's got to be ready for these sort of things and perhaps um more active in buying buying low selling high and uh, and then uh, taking the opportunity to get back in the game when the markets are lower well that's the key isn't it getting back in the game when the markets are lower um yeah. i mean for me personally i'm not particularly buying stocks i'm certainly keeping an eye on stocks that i think look interesting that have got good management that have got i think what's very important is to have cash that they've raised recently or have yeah. cash in the yeah. bank because it's definitely getting harder to raise money and if there's still a little bit more of a storm to weather early part of next year having that cash to see through is is, is invaluable really and of course they've got to have a, a compelling looking project with a good good defined timeline really mm. so i'm i'm kind of i'm i'm very much in a cash position at the moment really um still hold a few stocks from, from the year but i'm not actively looking to actually invest um not right now i'm just sort of testing the water seeing what's around mm. and looking for the opportunity as you say when um when the prices are low because i think one thing that is for sure one thing i'm feeling more than ever and, and you talk we talk to paul johnson quite a lot and paul johnson i think has been feeling this feeling for <laughs> a long long yeah. long 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 time uh he had perpetual feeling of optimism uh that it's just around the corner for uh, for the mining and commodity sector uh but i am genuinely starting to feel it uh i think um Perhaps not next year, um, but uh, my, 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 if, I make, if I'm going to make a prediction, I'm going to say first six months, still a little bit tough. Interest rates are still going to go up. You're still going to see heat come out of the market, that kind of mm. thing. You probably see some volatility. It's going to be quite choppy. But then I, my, 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 uh, my pick for next year, and the second half anyway, is, is gold, uh, physical and on gold stocks, because I feel yep. that that, that, that the price of gold will start to do pretty well as uh, as it fears in the economy come in. And then after that, you should then see us come out the other end in maybe a year or, or two. Uh, and the governments will hopefully go down this green shift. Mm. And you're going to see the commodities, you're going to see uranium, uh, all the battery metals, all the green economy metals, electrification of vehicles, metals, all those commodities are going to have an awesome time. And everyone, you speak to people in this space a lot, Alan, and there's a vibe I get all the time. There is simply not the supply. There is simply no. not the supply. Inventories are low, and with forward-looking demand, there is simply not the supply. And I heard the other day that even the Camborn School of Mines have stopped offering their ge ge geology course, or one of them, because there are not enough people. So um, this is all the signs Good that uh, yeah, this is all the signs, isn't it? <laughs> that um, yeah, that the, the sector is in the doldrums, which we kind of know it is, and 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 it's it's really due its time out and. Um, Again, to quote that, what, what, what uh, the uh, commodities investor Alexander Starhill told me, who I did a podcast with, we've got to create the investment of six United States of Americas in the next 30 years. And most of that has to happen in the next 10 if we're going down the green shift. And you put all these pieces together, I really do feel the stars are aligning for what actually is going to be an awesome once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for that sector. So I'm very excited about the future. And I think it's just mm. important to uh, yeah to stay liquid to to, to stay solvent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, uh, no one ever went broke taking a profit either. So no. if you have a good run on one of your stocks, then take some money off the table. You know, bank that cash. Exactly. It, 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 you, 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 we don't know what's around the corner, but yeah, that's the thing. There is going to be a, a supply squeeze, um, and and I think the numbers also on uh, mining projects too. I think of all the mining projects in the world and this is looking across gold rare earths um lithium uh, nickel all of these um very very few a very small percentage actually become commercial mm. because you can find it you can find it, it the uh the mineral in commercial grades to start with but then of course um if the price moves um you, you could start building a mine based on economics based on a forecast uh price for that uh, that mineral which if it suddenly moves against you um you know within a few weeks uh your project could turn from a viable commercial enterprise into into something that simply uh, doesn't add up and of course this is the challenge you know it's about timing it's about bringing those projects to market at the right time but because of that there are these supply squeezes you know you've got to you've got to meet demand but at the same time the projects you're working on have to be commercially viable and that's uh, that is supported by and large by a robust price um but i think as you rightly say the stars are aligning because the greater the supply squeeze the 
the the, the further the price of that commodity will be pushed. So mm. that's a that's a factor to consider. And I think when you look at the amount of projects out there and the amount that actually come through and come to market, that really is the key challenge that um, that uh, that um, the 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 economists face. Indeed, we're talking about projects that are commercially viable and taking a project from uh, my uh, discovery to producer, which is very rare. And the first one I'm going to uh, make my one of my picks for next year is Premier African Minerals. I only spoke to George actually this morning, the last interview mm-hmm. of the year. Of course, we both know all about that company, but uh, Lithium yeah. Project out in Zulu uh, is going into pilot plant production, uh, targeting yeah. um, 48,000 um, by early uh, mid-Feb, really. So they should be in production. They've got the offtake agreement. It's all fully funded. So that's definitely a pick for me because lithium there, of course, part of the very much part of the green economy. Uh, but but you've got a very company there that's well funded, well advanced, with a good deposit that's still expanding. Um, plus the bonuses of the other projects, you know, we can leave them aside. But they'll actually be going into production. What an exciting uh, time for for a mining and exploration company to actually get into production and get some cash in the door. So that that's my first pick for next year. It, it's an incredible turnaround for Premier as well, isn't it? Because of course the the uh, the, the rights were only re-established, I think, um, early this year, and uh, mm. um, and uh, of course there's been the sudden turnaround, um, and then through through, through the uh, the PFS and the DFS. All of a sudden, the the true potential of the the project emerged. So you know, George Roach has done a fantastic job. Uh, George Roach and his team have done a fantastic job bringing that through and bringing it to market. But of course, it's not a one trick pony either. You've got um, the RHA tungsten mine. You've got uh, you've got the other projects the company has uh, shareholdings in. So there, there's an awful lot more to Premier Mineral, Premier African Minerals than just uh, the Zulu project. Yeah, indeed there is. And George had mentioned today that uh, one of his highlights for next year that he's looking out for is to perhaps uh, take some of those projects a little bit further. He said it's going to be a company, I think he said a company growing year as well as, of course, a company producing year. And uh, he's very he's very excited. So and rightly so. And I think it's got a great following as well with shareholders. So it's, it's a great story to follow. So that's definitely yeah. my pick. Yeah. I hope to be... Uh, Onto a winner uh, with that one when we talk again in a year's time, Alan. But uh, do, do, get, let's get one of your picks then for next year. What are, what are you perhaps looking at? Well, I, I think one that we're both aligned on here, Mark, uh, which has absolutely blazed the trail since coming to market. And of course, we mentioned Paul Johnson earlier. Mm-hmm. This is a company uh, which uh, Power Metal Resources sold some assets in Canada to. It's, of course, First Class Metals. Um First Class Metals have just picked up the IPO of the Year Award from UK Investor Magazine. It, you know, it's uh, an incredible accolade, but they have absolutely blazed a trail. And they really, I, I, I just, I've said in so many of my, my posts, I think this company uh, under James Knowles and Mark Sale and Aya Bodhi and the team, they've just written the book on how to mm. successfully IPO a company. You know, you, you bring it to market at a modest, fairly priced valuation, and you make sure that there's an avalanche of news flow, which is what Mark Sale said, quote, unquote. And, of course, they've delivered in spades the uh, joint venture with uh, Palladium One on the Pickle Lake asset, which is northeast of, of the Hemlo, um, Barrick Hemlo gold mine. Um, the other assets across that area, the, the ESSA, Magic, um, and, and, and the others. And then, of course, we have the Sunbeam Mine acquisition, which just completely came out of the blue. It's it, it, it's a, a dormant gold mine, but uh, historical working, so much happening there. Um, and there's so much to be excited about. And the company really managed their, 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 managed their cash, they've managed their news flow very carefully. And of course, IPO with a valuation of just six and a half million at 10p per share. Um, I think we were all involved in the IPO and certainly uh, uh, some warrants that were involved in the IPO at, uh, at 12.5p are now very much in the money, and the shares are now uh, trading at 17, 17 pence. But that still gives the company a valuation of less than 12 million. And I think given the assets the company has, and also the way Mark and the team communicate so well to the market, uh, you know, Mark's on on the ground in Canada, and uh, he's actually sending back film of himself actually on the ground looking at uh, looking at rock chip samples, looking at uh, the terrain, 
So there's great investor communication too. And I think um, any company looking to list should look at just mm. how first class metals have IPO the company, but also how they've sustained and managed their communications subsequently. You know, but you know, we, here we are, 11.7 million. I think this company has got an awful long way to go still. So it's certainly one of my picks. And I know it's one of your picks for uh, 2023 too. It is. It is on my list uh, as a pick for 2023. Yeah, for sure. But you, you, I echo what you say. A great example of how to IPO a company. I mean, hitting the ground running. And Mark Sale, yeah, very charismatic guy um, doing his videos from site. A great CEO and geologist. So yeah, they've hit the ground running and the share price is really reflecting it. In standing out, really, to be honest, in, uh, mm. in what's been a bit of a, a boring latter half of, of 2022. So all, all all credit to to the team there. Um, and I think they're going to do continue to do very well um, mm. throughout 2023. So, yeah, that, that's a good one. So then I mentioned earlier about gold, didn't I? I said gold, the price of gold. Uh, I've heard predictions of $2,300 uh, an ounce. Um, next year so that would be very nice if it gets to there my sovereigns <laughs> will be worth a little bit more <laughs> yeah I, I i think it's um it, it's always a safe haven asset uh, and of course it's um it, it, yeah, the uh the access to gold is um you can do you can buy gold in so many ways of course through etfs through mm. physical gold uh or you can hold it virtually so it's through companies such as bullion vault but uh yeah it, it's a safe haven asset and then these uncertain times you want um something that's going to provide you with that uh, that that that's uh, that's uh, that, that store of value so yeah indeed well of course a big ex- good good way to get exposure to uh, the price of gold isn't it is with a, a company an explorer mm. or 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 a, or a near producer uh, in gold because you're going to get many multiples hopefully returns so i've got two picks for next year in, in 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 gold the first one is caracal gold which i think a lot of uk investors are familiar with uh, Robin McRae, the CEO there, um, really doing a good job. I think timelines have slipped just a little bit, but you know, they always do. Getting financing deals over the line, ticking all the boxes, and you know, get building, ramping a production of a plant. It's uh, you know, it's not an, it's not an easy feat to achieve. But Robbie's always come across as very honest, and uh, you know, um, connecting with shareholders. So I, I I can commend that. But of course, they are already producing. Uh, they have a significant operation up there, and they're targeting that twenty four thousand ounces per year. Uh, from I think it's uh, the end of, and the latest I had was the end of H one. So effectively, the first, you know, latter the first half of uh, of next year, getting into some significant production there. But of course, on top of that, they're expanding the resource drilling, and they've got other projects as well in Kenya and also in Tanzania. So I like Caracal because they are producing. They've got good ambitions to produce more, sort of generate more cash flow. And it's aligned with my my sort of thoughts on 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 the price of on where gold's going to go, and of course that'll only benefit and bring in more cash for um, for Caracal. They released a well, it was an internal scoping study, I believe, that they published, but they were the, the figures were based on I think seventeen hundred uh, US dollars uh, or, or, and sixteen fifty as, as a as a lower as a as a sort of a tougher case. So it's kind of where we are now, a little bit lower. So you know, and that was pretty profitable at that point. It's 118 million, if I recall correctly, of free cash flow uh, per year. So you know, you can imagine the difference it'll make if gold does get up to over two thousand uh, dollars per per ounce. Um, so yeah, Caracal definitely is a good one, I think, for next year to keep an eye on and uh, potentially look to uh, pick up some stock. Indeed, indeed, we'll. we'll uh... Just, just following on on the gold theme, um, and also um, as announced today, the, a, a new dimension to its investment uh, proposition. Of course, uh, Mark, we've spoken many times about ECR minerals. ECR, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and ECR, uh, of course, anyone that's followed the company will know that um, uh, Craig Brown very sadly died uh, back in October two thousand twenty-one, and the company have had to manage the manage the process. So through David Tang, Trevor Davenport. Um, Andrew Scott and Adam Jones, they've managed the uh, the ongoing drilling works um, uh, across Victoria in Australia. And of course, that was up to the uh, appointment of the new chief executive, Andrew Haythorpe, um, in April this year. And Andrew really uh, has now put his stamp on the company. I mean, it has a, a, great, a great portfolio of assets. Um, of course, the, uh, the two core assets were always Bayliston and Kresic, um, some some very solid results from Bayliston through the year. 
the company's just announced there it's uh, it's uh, secured two, uh, two new licenses uh, in the Victoria area, one of them being at Bayliston. So that expands the, the area there substantially. Um, on the uh, within the Bayliston asset, they're of course drilling the Blue Moon prospect, and uh, Blue Moon is one that Andrew Haythorpe was very much engaged with, uh, given the given the uh, the unusual mineral mineralization. They're in the process of drilling to the west of where the drilling campaign took place in 2019, and we'll have further results on that shortly. But certainly, the the first hole that came back revealed some decent grades. Um, and then we go to Creswick, which, of course, um, you know, Craig Brown was long uh, banging the drum for, um, you know, talking about potential joint ventures, um, recently secured a new license area there. And there's an application for another license area down towards, uh, well, they, they have a new license area down towards Ballarat. There's a further one adjacent to Creswick. But, of course, Creswick, uh, the company, owns a land at uh, uh, a piece of land and a property at um, uh, Brewing Lane at Springmount, and um, they've reassayed some of the uh, core drilling, uh, the, the drill core from earlier, and got some exceptionally strong grades out of the ground there. Um, and then announced yesterday that they'd identified a further, a new parallel gold system um, at Creswick, some 500 meters to the east. So, so the the opportunity there is expanding. Uh, exponentially um, and you know hearing Andrew and Adam Jones talk about it in an interview yesterday they're really really excited about it and of course that's just part of the story and East Victoria they've got the Tambo project which the uh, license was, was granted there earlier this year they'll be moving to that and, and uh, uh, initial exploration there then we go to North Queensland they have the Lulworth project uh, where they've, they've undertaken a stream sampling campaign uh, this is uh, adjacent, well, close to the Charters Towers gold gold mine and many other gold mine workings in uh, the Queensland area. Um, the stream sampling uh, revealed multiple examples of visible gold, um, so they're identifying drill targets. But this morning, they also announced that they've identified a series of pegmatites across the area um, and... Uh, Pegmatites, of course, uh, many are spotted in bearing, but um, from the sampling, they've lo- they've identified anomalous lithium, tantalum, and niobium uh, in the first batch of stream samples, which Andrew Haythorpe said, you know, um, it's way exceeded his expectations. But of course, that adds now another dimension of value to ECR. And then finally, of course, in Queensland, we have the Hurricane Project. The company has an option to acquire. This is a late stage project close to a Jork resource. Um, and in May, June next year, the company will go out and put, put drill, drill pads on there. They, of course, now have a second drill rig uh, that's, uh, that they've acquired. They're also, they've also just raised uh, 900,000. Um, they also have two further properties and other assets that uh, they're in discussions to, uh, to, 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 to sell at some point. So, um, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Mark, being cashed up is very important, and ECR have plenty of cash to undertake all their activities for this for the foreseeable future. And of course, we see that the share price has spiked up nicely this morning. We're back, we're up eleven half percent to just under a penny. But I think at these levels, we've got a market cap of eleven point three million, with an awful lot of assets um, about to explode into life. Excellent. Yeah, I know ECR is one of your favourites, Alan. And now that they've got things hopefully sorted there on the on the management side of things, then they can have a, a good year ahead of them, particularly if they are they are cashed up like like you say. Yeah. So sticking with with gold for now and sticking with Australia, uh, one we haven't actually spoken about before on on uh, on the research talks, but it's Barton Gold. Now it's an Australian an ASX listed company. They were on a podcast with me and I, I met the CEO, Alexander Scanlon, at the Minds and Money show just a couple of weeks ago in London and really got to know the company a bit better. And I really like the look of this company. I think the CEO is very dynamic. I think he's very confident. He's got great ambitions. He comes across as someone who's very switched on and will drive this company to what he wants to achieve. Now, they've got projects in South Australia. They've got a couple of projects, uh, the Tar Cooler and the Tun Killer project. And uh, Tunkilla already has an existing um, resource on there of 965,000 ounces of gold. 
and the Tarkula project is an existing uh, an existing uh, site that was uh, I think owned by um, Perseverance Mining, um, which uh, was never really fully explored. Um, it was very uh, it was very early on, sort of uh, early early 1900 really but um, they were getting some very good grades out of there but it didn't really it's still very underexplored from what what i believe and um they also have a mill they have their own mill uh, called the the gawler uh, center, center central gawler mill so they can actually process all the ore uh, into gold uh, themselves and funnily enough they as they acquired this because they only ipo'd not so long ago so it's only maybe a, a year or so ago that they ipo'd they again are well cashed up I think they have at least 10 million uh, in the bank. So they're, they're well cashed up to go through this. Everything was funded, he said, to take them through to further drilling and proving up resources, improving the mineral resource and getting the Jork compliant resource on, on both the projects and looking to combine both those projects into one and then process through through the mill. But at the mill, when they when they sort of went in there uh, to start work on it, from, from historical workings, there was a lot of sort of little bits of gold lying around us. us. As, as as was the case, and mm. I think it was about one point five million US dollars worth of gold, which they, they've started to to sell. I think the first million's gone through, so another half a million to go. So um, they're already cash flow positive. They have support from the South Australian government as well, funding support because apparently South Australia is really keen on uh, on boosting the the mining sector. You know, similar to how the Northern Territories. Uh, it's quite pro- prolific for, for mining. So they got a lot of government support there. But um, yeah, having spoken to the CEO there, looking at the projects, looking at the resource they've got, they're already cash flow positive. And again, my, my, my feeling on, on what's going to happen with gold, I think you need to look at a company that is well cashed up with good projects and is close to production, if not already producing, with, with potential to expand. So Barton Gold, uh, and you can buy it uh, from in the UK. These are interactive brokers. And, you know, most brokers these days will allow you to buy ASX mm-hmm. stocks. Yeah. Um I think it's it's around 30 million a market cap of 30 million Aussie, I think. Uh which is about I think just under 20 mil, I think pounds ish, something like that. So um yeah, it's certainly not dirt cheap, you know, it's certainly not bottom of the barrel, but it's but it's got a long way to go. You know, it's still it's still very much in its uh infancy and its growth stage i think so i'm hoping that uh, we can follow the story a bit more with barton gold as they get out on the road a bit more next year as alexander told me he plans to do and some more interviews and then maybe you can do research talks for us as well and and, and set out your uh, your view on it but, but yeah my other gold pick for the year is barton gold in, in australia so that's one um, one for you to perhaps have a look at alan over the, the weekend i will i'll, I'll... <laughs> I'll take a close look at that, Mark. That, 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 that sounds very interesting. And, and as you say, with support and the, the, the existing mine work is there already. It's uh, that they're, they're already a relatively late stage explorer, aren't they? Exactly. They're, they're, you know, explorer forward slash producer. So, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah. So those are my, my gold ones. And then we've talked about first class. My other my mm. other pick would be, and this is um more I guess it's more speculative, maybe or maybe not. I don't know, but it's Marula, Marula mining, which of course we have spoken about before, haven't we? And again, that's lithium. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's two lithium plays for me, two gold plays. And then first class is a well, it's nickel, isn't it? And a bit, a bit, a bit of everything else as well. Mm. But um, <clears throat> yeah, Marula mining. Jason Brewer, he's a he's a great guy. He's uh, very ambitious to to grow that company. Um, looking for early stage cash flow, isn't he? Really, from from yes, the project yeah. out in. Yeah. Um, in Africa, so um, yeah, that's Blesburg, the Blesberg, yeah, the, Ble- yeah, the Blesberg, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But he's he's very keen. He's very he's very driven, isn't he? From what I, what I you know, from speaking to him, uh, he doesn't mess about. He's he's really cracking on. He says he says what he's going to do, and he goes and does it, and comes back and tells you he's done it, and tells you what he's going to do next. Um, but but yeah, looking for very early stage cash flow. Really going around with an excavator, I believe, and taking what what is there at Blesberg as easy access and getting some cash flow in. Yep. to then go and build other projects isn't he so again that's um another one that, that i think looks quite good because it's again it, it's 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 got the cash it is on aquis okay it's not mm. the not the best exchange but it, it, it's okay you can still but i think he does have plans to to move on to uh, the bigger the bigger exchanges but um looking for early stage cash flow which again i think is is important so though that, that's my other pick alan marula Okay. Okay. Well, I have several more. I, I'm just going to go run through these. Uh, so, so, still, still on the mining front, there, there are two more miners that I just want to talk about, um, and I'm going to talk about power metal resources because uh, I still think Paul has got the most incredible 
cross section of of projects. But mm. they put out a a commercial uh, update yesterday, and uh, um, Paul just said, you know, he's a resolute believer in the markets and in the junior resource sector, um, and that's why, of course, they're investing in so many projects. Um, and a lot of these projects are coming to market, you know, with first class metals. We've already seen them blaze a trail. Um, the next one on the on the conveyor belt here is, of course, um, is of course gold metal resources. Um, the company also has a stake in Cavango resources. Gold metal resources is about to come to market. Uh, gold metal resources, of course, have the portfolio of assets in Nevada. That's the that's the um, the uh, the uh, Pilot Mountain tungsten project. Um, also nearby are the Garfield Stonewall projects, um, and uh, and uh, they're all close. Uh, they're all sort of closely uh, uh, correlated together, so easy to manage, easy to easy to um, to administer. And of course, we've got Oliver Friesen who's on the ground there, who's an incredibly experienced geologist and a very dynamic uh, individual, and uh, is going to oversee oversee that IPO. First event development resource, of course, um, in Australia. They're based in uh, the the um, uh, Northern Territory with the Celta Uranium Project, and then of course in Western Australia we've got the Wallal Bracer Western Ripon Hills assets uh, close to, of course, the Winu uh, Rio Tinto Project, and of course uh, Haviran, uh, the Great and Gold Project. Uh, lots of anomalies, very similar to the. Uh, to the uh, um, discoveries at Haviran, so a lot of excitement there. Power Metal again have a stake there. So, um, so just looking through these upcoming companies, New Ballarat Gold, of course, that's actually I talked about Kresic. Uh, New Ballarat Gold have some interests that are just south of Ballarat. Um, some historical gold workings there. That's a joint venture, of course, with Red Rock Resources. Um, and then there's another Australian-based company uh, which is in South Australia, uh, which is. Not far from, I believe, from uh, Barton Gold's asset in Gawler. So, so we're going to hear some more about that as we go forward. And then finally, of course, uranium energy exploration, which is uh, which uh, which uh, is uh, based in the Athabasca Basin area of Saskatchewan, in Canada. Further plans there as well, but um, an awful lot of value just in those alone. And that's before, of course, we get to the developments at the Malopo Farms project, where they've identified this huge magnetic anomaly first drill goes into the ground and they pull nickel samples straight out so they literally hit pay dirt first first time out then of course we have the also in Botswana we have the the Tati gold project um, and then a raft of other projects around the world that are part of the asset portfolio and given those given that the company's crystallized its stakes uh, has a stake in first class metals which is already worth over three million quid um Kavango Resources, of course, has the shareholding there uh, from the disposal of Kanye Resources uh, back to Kavango. Uh, a, a value shareholding value there of just over a million. Um, and of course, you had the IPO projects up as well. And Power Metal has a valuation of just over 20 million, which I think is absurd. I, I think I did a back of the bank packet calculation uh, some time ago, and um, the projects came out just as. Um, Around the 75 million mark, and I think I, I think the the values have moved on a lot since then. But of course, we're in a market which doesn't fairly value these assets at the moment. So it's looking at these companies and thinking, well, uh, and trying to assess which one is going to explode into life or which one has a better chance of delivering. And I think the companies with a selection of advanced assets and projects are the ones that are probably going to deliver. And certainly, Power Metal is very much in that category at the moment and here we are at 1.3p of course they raised money recently at 1.4p so it's trading below the raise level so i reckon that offers great value and a great opportunity for growth um throughout 2023 absolutely and if we you know they are well positioned in many commodities aren't they so if we do see gold go next year then hopefully power be- uh, benefit there but they've also got a whole basket of other projects as well other commodities i mean if, if a company if any company out there is setting up for a <laughs> bull market uh a decade plus in, in in this sector then it's power isn't it it's going to really it uh, it see, yeah. see the yeah. dividends there so yeah. excellent okay good any more uh yeah i want to touch on green x metals grx okay. is the epico this is the former prairie mining and uh, there is a court case currently going on with 
the Polish government that could see um, an awful lot of money returned to uh, the coffers of Green X Metals if they win the case. Uh, the case is fully funded. Uh, they have a team of lawyers. They have a litigation fund of twelve and a half million dollars. So, so they are uh, th th they are certainly cashed up for that. But that's not what the company are about. They are working and own owners of the Arctic Rift project in Greenland. Of course, we've spoken before about Amarok Minerals and others uh, in the area um, uh, operating in Greenland. And Greenland is still very much undiscovered territory. But every time, uh, every time you hear about the company taking some samples there, the grades are truly astonishing. And um, uh, there, it was like something out of a science fiction movie. The team landed uh, landed um, up in the north of Greenland and drove these incredible ATV vehicles, Sherpa ATV vehicles. In fact, um, we put something out across the social media for them and tagged Sherpa, and it just went viral. It was it's incredible. People were really excited by these huge, uh, what looked like a moon uh, or, or moon rover vehicles, but um, they're all terrain. So they literally came off, uh, came off the boat, drove across this this wild, inhospitable terrain, and they're chipping off uh, a copper from rocks, which could literally go straight into the smelter and be processed. It's uh, it's it's just everywhere. So it's incredibly exciting. Um, still early days. They're undertaking more work there. So we're going to hear an awful lot more from GRX. Um, Currently trading at 32p. I mean, the shares have risen certainly in the past few months to reflect the progress they've made there. But um, that's giving the company a market capitalization of about 151 million Australian dollars. That's about uh, that's about uh, 70 to 80 million sterling. Um, and I think, given what's going to come back in from you know what we hope will come back in from the court case and this incredible untapped asset uh, in the Arctic Rift Copper Project. I think uh, I think the company set for a really exciting year next year. And of course, copper is going to be key to power that new clean tech uh, energy we've been talking about. Yeah, indeed. It is indeed. Excellent. Okay, good. I know we've spoken about that company before, so uh, it's good to know it's one of your picks for next year, Alan. Yeah. A um, bit more variety. Um, I want to talk about tech capital. Uh, spoken about tech capital. There are many companies out there that invest into university technology, of course, based at the, Su the Sussex Innovation Centre. Mm -hmm. We do see uh, a lot of these com companies coming in. But Tech Capital uh, both firstly have a network, a global network of uh, communication with universities, um, IP that uh, is coming out of the universities, and it connects investors with that IP. So you can go in, uh, use the app, express your interest, uh, or, or your investing preference, and you'll be connected with the IP emerging from universities and labs around the world that could uh, that could dovetail with that. Um, in terms of their portfolio, the company have four key holdings, and those key holdings, uh, uh, firstly, there's a company called Lucid, which was uh, 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 listed on the NASDAQ early this year. The company now holds 71% of Lucid, and this is smart eyewear, so it's Bluetooth eyewear, um, and uh, it's it, it's um, this is a fast emerging sector, um, and uh, it's a very exciting sector to be in. So um, tech tech capital saw the opportunity way before that, so they have a huge stake and shareholding in this business, which is is going to power ahead and looks to be set for a very a very strong year next year. Um, the company has a stake. It owns 100% of Guidant. Um, and of course, we've all heard about autonomous vehicles um, and uh, how our world's going to be in the future. But of course, with autonomous vehicles, you've got to have operating stations and technology to run these vehicles. So if the car is driving along the road, it can respond in nanoseconds to an event or to somebody crossing the road. And this is what Guidant is about. It's um, it's it's about re remote monitoring and controlling of these vehicles, um, and also providing logistical support, uh, such as first call responder to take control of the vehicle and to provide real time comms with passengers or pedestrians. So mm -hmm. you know, really exciting innovation. And then uh, this is what the company looks for: it looks for really simple, uh, solid ideas. Um, the company has a stake in Microsoft and sorry, Microsoft 
not Microsoft, slip of the tongue there. Um, it owns 97% of Microsalt, which is um, it, the food industry is, of course, uh, the snack food industry is enormous. But uh, there are some huge health problems that have evolved from that around the world, particularly in the US, uh, through excess sodium consum consumption, which, of course, triggers cardiovascular disease and uh, leads to premature death and, of course, huge health bills, um, the, the, the huge health bills that go with it. So Microsoft's developed a patented process for producing micron-sized salt crystals that provide all the flavor of salt with half of the sodium for applications in fast food and uh, and, uh, and and for the food industry. Um, Microsoft has just announced it is going to float on AIM very shortly. So that's a huge, exciting progress. That will, again, see uh, tech capital uh, crystallize, excuse the pun, uh, it's holding in Microsoft. Finally, it has a holding in Bellascura PLC. Of course, Bell are already listed on AIM, and this it owns 12% of Bellascura, which is a respiratory device medical company that has a portable oxygen concentrator to provide on-the-go support for uh, people suffering from respiratory disease, particularly COPD. Um, as there's no cure, of course, patients have to live with it. And uh, what Bellascura have created is... Uh, is an oxygen generator that's light, portable, easy to use. And of course, it gives the patient more food in it. And that's a, that's a hugely important development. So Tech Capital currently trading at 17.5p. Uh, um, it's uh, down on the year. So I think uh, ahead of this listing with Microsoft next year and uh, the developments uh, and innovation from its other holdings, I think uh, the company set for a really strong next uh, year next year. Just obviously a low 15.6p, giving the market capitalization right now of 26.6 million. Excellent. Okay. Well, nice to put in a different one there, Alan, at the end. So that's that's nice to and hear. Is that all your picks for next year then? Yeah, the, the, there's just uh, just one more I want to touch on quickly. Um, and this is not a company you can actually buy at the moment. It's a company called More Acquisitions, which was a SPAC setup. Okay. It, um, it basically was suspended at 0.9p. Uh, with a valuation of a million, um, uh, based on uh, a, a an acquisition of a company called Mega Steel, um, okay. and Mega Steel, uh, incredibly successful um, turnover of nineteen point seven million, with EBITDA of three point eight million, I think it was, on that particular year for two thousand twenty one, and they are bro uh, steel brokers. They sell steel all over the world, and this is steel for use in pre stressed concrete, so construction. And of course, we talked at the start about uh, companies uh, or, or economies emerging from COVID and lockdown. There's a latent uh, uh, demand there for steel. And of course, once we come out of COVID completely and lockdown completely, that process will restart. So I think Mega Steel are very well placed to, uh, to take advantage of that. So when the company comes back to market and completes on the acquisition it announced back in October, um, it'll come back, I think, at a valuation of about 2.2p, which I think will modestly value Mega Steel. So uh, watch out for that because I think uh, Mega Steel is set for a for a mega year. <laughs> and what, what's it called? More M O R E. Or... Uh, uh, the epic code is T M O R. Although obviously, when it comes back to market, it will probably change that epic code. But that's the one to watch and keep on your watch list. Okay, T M O R. Well, you've just dropped that one in at the end there, Alan, <laughs> which uh, we've not spoken about before. So we'll have to do a research talk specific focus one on that, I think, so we can get some more information. But uh, excellent. Well, that's good. So we've got five each there. So we've got Premier Africa Minerals for me, Barton Gold, Caracal Gold, Marula Mining, and First Class. And again, First Class uh, for you, Tech Capital, Green X, ECR, POW, and, and T Timor. Is it? Is that what is it? T Timor. Timor, yep. T M O R. Mega yep, Steel. Yep, okay. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Well, let's see what the scores on the door are in in a year's time, Alan. Hopefully, I pick some better stocks uh, now than I did uh, did last year because it was a pretty terrible pick for me. But uh, but then again, the market wasn't that great either. So um, let's see. If, I think uh, it, it's been a very difficult market this year, Mark, and, and I don't think anyone can be judged on how their portfolio has <laughs> performed because when we spoke about it, 
no one was expecting Putin to invade the Ukraine. So. No, and that, that came very soon yeah. after Christmas, didn't it? It was January, wasn't it? Let, get through all the nice festive period, and then that happened. Yeah, February. That was... uh, I, I think it was the 26th of February he actually mm. invaded, but, but I think the, the warning signs were there uh, oh, before, yeah, were. before that. So, yeah. 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 yeah, who knows? Who knows what, what the next thing is? But uh, anyway, we, we will worry about that when, when it happens, if it does, because it might never happen. But uh, for now, thank you very much, Alan. So I wish you a very Merry Christmas. I hope you uh, do fully recover in time to enjoy the Christmas dinner in all its uh, glory. And uh, a Happy New Year to you. And I guess we will catch up in, in January time. We will indeed, Mark. And just like to say once again, a Merry Christmas and a very happy and peaceful and prosperous New Year to you and to all of our listeners. Thank you, Alan. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.